course 109, CD, course 109. And here I do want to create um, a file called fib. And then I'm going to open that file. And I'm calling it fib because the one of the problems um, they give us an interview prep and they said that one of the problems might be to um, search an array and return all elements where the elements index is a Fibonacci number. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to have to create an array. Um, then I'm going to have to search that array and return all values or all elements. Let me just kind of keep it and return all elements where the index is a Fibonacci number and then I want to print out all the elements that where the elements index is a Fibonacci. I feel like I said that like three times now. Um, all right, so let's get started here. I'm going to create an array, and I think I'm just going to create, let me see, I'll just do like the alphabet. We'll keep it simple, and plus it's a little bit easier to test too, so... Um, I don't know what easier way to do this, so I'm just going to have to type it all out manually. Thank you. Apparently, it thinks that my P is a method call or something. Um, all right, let's just test this and make sure that I did this correct. I like to test early and often to make sure I find my mistakes. We want to fib. All right, so I have an array where each element is a character in the alphabet. So it looks like it's working good. I'll get rid of that test. And so I like to typically work backwards. I found just I mean, in my short amount of programming time here, that that works best for me. So what I'm going to do is actually call the um, method print Fibonacci. And then that's going to take the alpha array. And... I'll just keep that kind of in order here. So let's call define print Fibonacci. And that's going to take an array. And then let's just uh, let's just do this. Let's see if that method calls working. All right, it is. Looks like it's working good. So um, print Fibonacci. So I'm going to go, since we need to s select the methods, or select the elements from the array that are equal to a Fibonacci, I, I think select is going to be the best to use here. So we'll go array.select, um, call it element, 
just to keep it kind of consistent. So I want to select the elements and return the element. No, no. Oh, you know what? Do I even... So is Fibonacci. So... But I don't want the actual elements. So I want the index. I want to know if the index is up. Uh, so I think array dot index element. Uh, let me do something real quick here. Let me do a test. Let me just test my theory here. So array probably a lot easier way to do this but element I want to put uh, element or array dot index of the element is that gonna work here Oh, that makes sense. So there's 25, so 0 to 25 is 26 letters, so that looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. So, so far so good. Okay, oh, awesome. I like it when things work, especially when I'm recording a video. Okay, so let's see if this makes sense. Select all the methods in the array where if it's a Fibonacci, so if the index, the elements index within the array is a Fibonacci. So search the array and return, print out. So let's do this. Define is Fibonacci and it's going to take a number, right? Because we're checking to see if there's a number. And I'm going to use, actually, you know what? Before I do anything, let's do this. Let's set this to true. And, oops, it looks like, hopefully that's the only problem. All right, so actually, you know what, I'm gonna do. I think this would be better. Maybe, <laughs> maybe better, I don't know. I guess it keeps. I just don't like how it's like, All right. I think that's fine because hopefully if uh if you have a problem with the way I did that or if you have a better way please uh write something in the comments because I am like I said I'm just a beginner um uh, to both pretty much programming and and ruby um specifically so if that is if there's a better way to do that just so I can make it prettier here um, then tell me, but it is just a print. I'm not really, I don't care what the return value is. I just want it to output, um, the array. So, and we could even do something 
cooler like flatten it or something or or like a joint join it so it's not an array it's actually like a bunch of strings but anyways okay so it looks like it's working and just to make sure yep so it's an empty array so that's cool so is Fibonacci um, so I'm gonna use a, a Gessel's test here luckily for me um, I just took a discrete math class a while last year a few months ago I guess but um, so I work with Fibonacci numbers uh, quite a bit, and I think this one should work. So what I'm going to say is I'm, I'm going to create two numbers here. Um, num, num1 uh, variable is going to be 5 times the num squared plus 4, and num2 is going to be uh, 5 times the num squared minus 4. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to check both of those numbers. And I'm going to see if they're a perfect square. So I'm going to check num1. Or is perfect square. num2. So the idea is that if if either one of these numbers, num1 or num2, is a perfect square, then it is indeed a Fibonacci number, as far as I know. <laughs> so hopefully it works. Um, so of course I have to create my is perfect square. Uh, and that's also going to take a num and here, uh, I'm just going to set this to true just to test it. So I'll stub it to true here. I get it. And if I set this to false, it should give me an empty array, which it does. So looks like things are working. So perfect square uh, I gotta try to remember how to do this so I know that I need to require big decimal because I'll just keep it here I learned the hard way before that actually just recently that um, Ruby doesn't like, if you try to see if two uh, numbers are equal to each other, it, I think it only goes so many decimal places. So by requiring the big decimal, like it'll, it'll track it. I don't know how far out, but, but it works for this uh, type of thing. Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to take, we'll call it, uh, let me see, S, I don't know. I'm not very creative with my variables. So I'm just saying S is, stands for like square. So square, big decimal. Um, so I'm going to create um, this here. And then I'm just going to do uh, the square root. So I'm basically taking the the square root of, of, of this. So... I don't know. I could call it square root or whatever, but I'm going to do this. And I'm going to use um, a test here with a modulo. So S modulus modulo 1 equals 0. If I'm correct, this should work. So I'm, I'm basically given, taking the square root of the number which is generated from here. So whatever index, let's just go back and make sure because it's probably good for me to do. So if it's a, if the index of the element in the array is a Fibonacci, we're going to print. 
So to find out what that is, so is Fibonacci goes here. So that's going to insert the index number. The index number is going to get put into these two variables. So num1, so 5 times whatever the number is squared plus 4, and 5 times the number, will, <coughs> whatever it is squared, minus 4. And that's going to get put into perfect square. So if it is a perfect square, or if it evaluates to true, then it is a Fibonacci. And so it comes in here, and we use the big decimal class. Um, and that takes a num, and then I, I do the square root. You can I think you can do like something like square root of num. It's something like that as well. But this to me this is just easier. Um, and then if that's that. So anyways, without further ado, let's test this. Cross my fingers, I should get that. Beautiful, I think. So let's check. So the index of A will be 0, which is Fibonacci. The index of B is 1, which is Fibonacci. The index of C is 2, which is a Fibonacci. The index of D is 3, which is Fibonacci. The index of E that's missing would be 4, which is not a Fibonacci. That's awesome. Index of F is 5, which is Fibonacci. GHI is 8. That's the 8th index, which is Fibonacci number. And then 8th, I, J, K, L, M, N. So that must be 13, which is a Fibonacci number, right? And then V is, that would be 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. So index 21 is a Fibonacci number. And the next Fibonacci number, that's what, 21 plus 13 is 34, if my math is correct, which would be outside the range of the alphabet. So that looks like it. Awesome. Success. Thanks for watching.